Hey everybody, I'm SK from The Haunting Grounds and uh, today I'm going to share with you some of my tips and tricks and techniques for, uh, for detailing your own homemade tombstones. Now a lot of people are out there making their own tombstones nowadays and uh, it's a really great way to uh, save money to put a little bit of yourself into your haunt. Um, and one of the key steps to this is the weathering. Uh, the tombstones that we that we're putting in our haunts are, are uh, supposed to be old and creepy, so we really want to go after that look. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of ways to uh, attain that look with uh, relative ease. Now, I don't think there's uh, anybody watching this video who doesn't know how to carve their own tombstones already. There's a lot of different ways of carving it, um, a lot of different methods. And none of them are wrong. It's it's all in what uh, what works for you. You're going to start with a piece of foam. Now the stuff that I use is uh, it's called XPS. Uh, it's extruded polystyrene. Um, there's a few people out there who use the EPS, which is the uh, uh, expanded polystyrene, which is uh, the beady stuff. Um, my techniques, um, I know they work for the XPS, and that's my recommendation as far as uh, which foam to use. The EPS is a lot less expensive, but um, it's also not as sturdy. So bottom line is you get what you pay for. Um, if you can afford to buy this uh, polystyrene, then that's what I, uh, or the um, XPS, then that's what I recommend that you buy. Um, now the first part of making a tombstone is, is you want to research and, and figure out what kind of shape you want and uh, go ahead and cut it out. I'm not going to go into all the details of cutting it out because it's, it's really cut and dry. I use, a, I use a hacksaw blade, sometimes I use a hot wire foam cutter. Um, it's really whatever works for you. The next step is to come up with some details. And again, I'm not going to go into to, uh, carving the details into the stone. There's a lot of different methods. Um, how, uh, a uh, wood burner using heat to melt the foam. Uh, some people uh, use a Dremel to carve it out. I use uh, an X-Acto knife. Now, once you've got your stone done, and this is the hard part, getting all this getting all this work done. All the detail work in your stone is going to take some time, which makes the, uh, the weathering process all the harder. Once you've put this much effort into a stone, it's, it's really difficult to uh, go ahead and tear into it, rip it all up. But the end justifies the means. And I think you'll find, especially once you... Uh, learn what techniques work for you that uh, it's worth it. So the first thing that I like to do that I like to start with with my tombstones is this uh, this edge, these sharp corners. You don't see these on old tombstones. It's the, uh, they start to wear away. So the way I do this is I take my trusty jackknife and anybody who's seen some of my other videos where I've done uh, the popcorning and, and uh, stuff, they recognize this. I use this for uh, a lot of different uh, tricks. But what I do is I take my knife and I just back and forth over this, just like that. Not real hard. And just run the blade back and forth over the stone and I chip away the, the, the foam on the edge. And what that does is that gives you a nice ragged edge. So you're going to want to go all the way around this stone and break up those edges. Now the harder you push down on your knife, the bigger the chunks are going to come out. So. Along these edges, you really don't want to push too hard or go too fast. 
you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to take too much out. Basically, you just want to round these edges off. And you're also going to want to make sure that you're going both directions when you're pulling these chunks of foam out. If you go in just one direction, you're going to have a, a, an identifiable pattern to, uh, to the way that this looks. So back and forth, over and over, and just kind of work all these chunks out. Don't worry about it if you accidentally take a big chunk. If you accidentally dig in too hard into something. Because we'll be able to work that into the rest of the detail. You know, if you're coming across these corners and you accidentally pull off a big chunk, don't worry about it. You know, we'll make that look good. All right. Now, you see we've got these edges all done. Just gotta go through and pick off any chunks of foam. Anything that's sticking on here that looks loose. You don't want these loose pieces to sit on here because if they fall off after you paint, they'll leave uh, unpainted spots. And uh, depending on what kind of lighting you're using in your haunt, that could uh, light this whole thing up light that whole spot right up and uh, stick out like a sore thumb. Get off all these little burrs. So that we don't have that problem. Okay, there we have it. Our edge is now chewed up, and you really can't tell. Um, at least you probably really can't tell on this uh, with the camera. But uh, that'll look a lot nicer once we get this thing painted up. Now the next step is you're going to look for any areas inside where you may also get some of this wear. Um, on this particular stone, that's going to be inside of this, uh, this seam here. Because water will sit down inside of, uh, inside of this um, lip here. And uh, if you're not familiar how wear happens on a tombstone, or damage happens, a lot of it comes from water sitting in, sitting in places getting into little seams and crevices, freezing, expanding, and then contracting when it thaws out over and over and over again. So that's going to cause this area under here, I'm sorry, this area under here to wear out as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig this out a little bit. So follow through with the uh, pattern kind of like what we did around the edge but we're going to go extremely light around these upper edges and just increase the pressure and uh, increase the amount that we're digging out here as we get down further into this sometimes uh, I think I put a little too much thought into some of this some of this wear and stuff but you know what like I said people have to look at mine from uh, pretty close so I like to get that extra detail just to give them something to look at give them something to read So 
for anybody who's interested in knowing on this specific tombstone, um, the way I got this, um, this skull in here, there's a lot of different ways to get uh, these three-dimensional details in your stone. Uh, this one, I used a Dremel. I took a pattern here. Printed this out on my computer. I taped it in place and uh, using a pen, just push down real hard and you can see that it kind of cuts into the into the paper, cuts through the paper and into the foam. And then uh, just lifting it up every couple of minutes and, and tracing over the uh, the divots from the pen into this into the uh, stone and drew this drew this here and then dremeled it out with uh, cut it out with the Dremel. The words are all carved with the uh, exacto knife, and I use a similar technique for that. Um, I go through, I print out my epitaph, I uh, put the paper right down on the stone, and I cut straight through the paper into the stone. Gives you a nice clean lettering, nice good look. Now the next step in doing these uh, doing this this damage is the cracks and this is where you really got to cut into this uh, the, all the work that you already did hopefully hopefully you got comfortable tearing into the stone when you took these edges out of here now for the cracks I use the same tool I use the smaller blade of uh, of my Swiss Army knife. And you can do this probably with any jack knife. Um, you could probably really do it with any knife. But you don't want to use something too sharp because uh, you'll end up cutting more through the foam. And you don't want to use something too dull because you'll end up ripping more into the foam. So a jack knife is probably a good option. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't think it would work as well with an X-Acto knife or uh, or a razor blade and uh, likewise I don't think it would work too well with a butter knife but as long as the knife is uh, kinda sharp um, you should be alright okay when I start uh, when I start thinking about the cracks and where I want to put the cracks I try and uh, I look at the stone and think about where again where the water's gonna sit where the damage is gonna start from and uh, I try and start my cracks off from there and uh, all I do is I take my, uh, my knife and just put it into the foam, just cut straight into the foam and then start twisting it back and forth, just like this. And I try not to follow any kind of uh, specific pattern, just uh, cut into the foam, cut across the letters, don't be afraid to get into those letters. Um, you're going to pull out little pieces of foam with it, that's okay. Um, you don't want to cut too deep and just jerk this knife back and forth and then when you go back over this spot you look for uh, any of these little chunks of foam that have, that have pulled and go ahead and just pop them right out They're, uh, that'll leave some bigger gaps in your foam or back gaps in your crack and then uh, once I've gotten that crack the way I like it I'm going to find another place right on that crack to continue another another one. And again, think about where you want to go with it, but uh, don't worry about it if you don't get there. And when you're done, you've got a very uh, at least in my opinion a very realistic looking crack now when we paint this um, we're gonna paint black over the entire stone and that, that black will really fill this crack in so that when we go over it with uh, with the gray uh, the crack will really stand out a lot better so we're gonna continue on with some more cracks and uh, 
see how this goes. Okay, now we've got all of our cracks finished on here. You can see, maybe you can see how they turned out. Uh, just kind of random across the face of the stone. Cut, uh, cut into some letters. And now the next step is, uh, one thing you find a lot of in these older tombstones is the centers of some of these, uh, some of these letters the, uh, the A might be popped out where the damage got into there and broke out the center of the letter. Now we're going to pick out, we're going to find just a couple of spots here where we can pick out the centers of some of these letters where the, where the, uh, where the damage went across. And Cause that stone to break away there in, in, uh, in those little weak sections. And I think that's probably going to uh, just about do it. Maybe we'll pluck this one out of this E here. And I think that's, uh, that's good. Now, the next step is these outside edges where these cracks really hit these edges you want to kind of break this up as, as the crack gets closer to the edge it's going to break up the stone more and more so dig right in there pull out some chunks of foam and the, the great thing about this uh, The great thing about this XPS foam is when you grab a chunk, it really gives a, a, an appearance of broken rock. You pull chunks out like this, it uh, really looks kind of like uh, broken rock. So you're able to get right in here, get right in and uh, dig this right out. really exaggerate that uh, that damage there. Don't be afraid to go all the way through to the back side of the stone because that'll give your uh, that'll give your crack a little bit of depth you know a little, little bit more realism you can when you can see all the way through there and uh, you can use your knife to do the same thing just Kind of reach in there and dig out little chunks. And I think that looks Pretty darn good. So we'll do that on a few other spots here. Really get into this uh, damage here and really chunk out some, some spots on this foam. These points are always a good place to take a little bit of uh, meat out of the stone. Cause that's what you see in real life, you know. You see these uh, sharp edges here, really worn down and and uh, missing.
Okay, we have all the damage done to our stone and uh, I've gone ahead and I cut the bottom off here at an angle. Uh, if you've ever been to an old cemetery, you've seen that the stones over time they shift and uh, a lot of the stones are leaning one way or the other. So this adds a little bit of character to our cemetery scene. And uh, the last step here is to add a little bit of uh, surface damage, a little bit of surface wear to the stone. Over time, uh, you know, the hail, uh, sand getting blown around, it uh, damages the sheen of the original stone. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray this down with uh, a light coat of black spray paint. Now, first of all, if you're not comfortable doing this, I recommend either A, practice on some scraps, or B, just skip this step. It's really not all that important. Uh, the stone will still look nice, um, but I like the look. I like the uh, what you can accomplish by adding this last little step here. Um, I do recommend that you practice on a piece of scrap or a couple of pieces of scrap before you start this. And I also recommend that you do this outdoors. The uh, acetone eats into the foam and when it does that, it creates a uh, toxic fume that you really don't want to be smelling. So if you don't have really good ventilation in your shop, and regardless, you should probably do this outdoors. So I'm gonna take my spray paint, my scrap piece of foam and our tombstone, and we're gonna take this outside and we're gonna give this a nice coat of uh, the black paint. Okay, I've got my scrap pieces of foam. I have my uh, spray paint all ready to go. I also have the hose ready to rinse this off if it uh, starts eating through the, uh, the foam a little too fast. So we're gonna give this a quick test run here and make sure that this is uh, having the right effect on the, on the uh, foam that we're looking for. Okay, and you can see how that spray paint is eating into the foam, taking away that smooth surface and giving it a nice texture. I'm pretty comfortable with uh, how that looks. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint the face of the stone. Okay, now, taking a closer look, you can see that the, uh, the paint ate into the foam in some places, but not in others, some places more than others. And that happened because I was a little bit farther away from the stone than I, uh, than I should have been, and some of the paint uh, dried up before uh, or immediately after hitting the foam. And that's okay, because this gives a nice uh, random appearance to that, uh, to that foam and it's still eating into the foam just a little bit, but uh, it's slowed down quite a bit and the damage is just about what, uh, just about what I was looking for. So we'll take this back inside, we'll let this uh, dry up and then we'll uh, finish on the painting process. Well, that's all for this video. Uh, be sure to check out uh, the second part where we'll cover the uh, start to finish process of painting the stone and uh, really bringing this thing to life. So uh, until next, I'm SK and thanks for watching.